On today's episode of EOS Tips, airdrops on the EOS blockchain, how do I get them? That's the question that I would like to answer for you today. So I believe when the word airdrop is used, this is what most people think of. It's a cargo plane that flies by and it drops its contents from the air. Now the supplies simply parachute to the ground where the recipients pick them up. And one of the key features of an airdrop in the purest sense, are that the dropper does not require the recipient to take any action or even know that the airdrop is coming. Right, The recipient might not even know the airdrop is coming until they see the cargo hit the ground. And even then they may not be around to see it, and thus they'll never know it happened. But the supplies will still be there for them to discover later. So that's the basic idea. So how does this concept translate to blockchains? Well, blockchains exist in cyberspace, so we don't have to worry about the geography like cargo planes do. We also don't have to worry about people receiving the airdrops because tokens can be dropped directly into individual accounts based on certain criteria. And that is one of the most important points to keep in mind. When a project decides to do an airdrop, they decide on the criteria which determines who gets the specific airdrop. So just because you hear about an airdrop happening doesn't automatically mean that you get it. So now let's move on to some tools that will help you remove a lot of confusion. There are a number of sites like eosdrops.io that list past and future airdrops along with the criteria for getting them. So some may have already passed and if you didn't fulfill the criteria then you've probably missed out on that one. There's only really two major criteria that are required for most airdrops. Number one, you have to hold some EOS tokens in your wallet and not on an exchange. And number two, you have to hold some EOS tokens in your wallet on the specific date when the project takes their snapshot. And a snapshot is just a photograph of the EOS blockchain at a single moment in time. Because EOS tokens are being transferred from one person to another all the time, the dropper, needs a definitive list of EOS account names and how many tokens each one has. If you transfer your EOS tokens out of your account after the snapshot, it doesn't matter. Just like once a photograph is taken, you can walk away and the photograph stays the same. On eosdrops.io, we can see the name of the project doing the airdrop, the token name, and a description of what it's for. Then we have the snapshot date, which we've just spoken about, plus the date on which the airdrop will actually happen. So as long as you satisfy the criteria, this is the date on which you expect the tokens to be dropped into your account. There is one extra criteria that I've seen some projects use though. Some projects require you to have a minimum number of EOS tokens in your account on the snapshot date in order to qualify for the airdrop. Now a special note on the Genesis snapshot. If you see the word Genesis in the snapshot column, that refers to the moment the EOS mainnet launched. To be in the photograph that was taken when the EOS network was actually launched, you would have had to buy EOS tokens during the ICO and then held them in your wallet, not on an exchange, during the launch process. Because that event only happened once, if you are now only just getting into EOS, there's no way to get into the Genesis snapshot. That photograph was taken on the 1st of June, 2018. So now a note on security. As it says here at the top of EOS drops, never share your private key with anyone offering airdrops. That's why I started this video out by describing the cargo plane. In the purest sense, an airdrop requires no action on the part of the receiver. If you're on a website that claims to be offering an airdrop but requires you to input your private key, stop immediately and report it to someone in the EOS community that you trust. With that said, you may have already noticed there is a column on EOS airdrops indicating that some airdrops do require some action to be taken. Now I'm going to suggest that you ignore these completely in the interests of security. I have not assessed each of these airdrops to find out what kind of action they require but my default advice would be to just ignore them. Right, and that ensures that you don't put your valuable 
EOS tokens at risk just so you can get some free coins that may end up being worthless. That's my standing advice for this video. But what I may do is publish individual videos about specific airdrops after I've checked what action they require and then to see if it's okay for you to do that or not. If in doubt, leave it out. So how do you know for sure if you actually got an airdrop? You may have already received some airdrops into your EOS account and not even know it. So if you go to eostracker.io and you enter your account name in the search box here, you'll see this section called other tokens, which lists anything in your account that isn't EOS. I just picked this account at random. And as you can see, it has a whole bunch of different tokens in it. If you want to be even more certain that it's actually an airdrop, then you can go to eosflare.io and then enter your account name here, scroll down to the list of actions. And the great thing about EOS transactions is that you can include a text message to give someone a clue as to what the transaction was for. And most airdrops actually let you know that it is an airdrop by mentioning it in this memo field. Now, one final note before we close, the number of tokens you receive in an airdrop is almost always based on how many EOS tokens you have on the date the snapshot is taken. Right, this creates an incentive for people to buy and hold EOS tokens. Sure, you can buy tons of EOS tokens the day before a snapshot and then sell them all the very next day. But there's a lot more reasons to hold EOS for the long term other than airdrops. But I'll talk more about those in another video. So that's all I've got for you today. Please hit the like button, subscribe for more videos like this, and share it with someone that you feel will derive value from it. If you derive value from this video, then please reflect that by sending me an EOS tip to my account name, which is Chris J S Coney, like this person did down here a few days ago. So thank you to that person for that. But that's all for now, guys. I will be back with the next installment of EOS tips. So until then, it's me, Chris Coney saying bye for now.